Hello and welcome to the Divine Guidance of First Quarter Moon in January 2023. My name is Lila Brown. I'm founder of the organization called Crystal Weavers. Together we are weaving the new crystal paradigm. As you know, in New Moon, we set an intention for the moon cycle. And this moon cycle's intention is to seek answers internal. Today, we will be talking about what it means to seek answers internal when we're working with the energetics of first quarter moon. As you know, first quarter moon is aligned with the south. The south's energetics, first quarter moon energetics, is the feminine external. In the feminine external, we have the opportunity to work with the feminine aspects of our world. We have the opportunity to work with our dearest Mother Earth. We have the opportunity to work with Divine Mother. And we have the opportunity to work with all of the energetics that are of the feminine nature. With our moon cycle intention, we can look external to those beings that we know are of 100% pure source, love and light. And we can look to them for assistance in how it is best for each of us to know our own truth by seeking the answers within us. I mentioned seeking assistance from those in our world that are of 100% pure source, love and light. How do you know the difference? How do you know that it is a trusted being? How do you know that it's not a being coming to you or um, an energetic in your world that is just simply disguising themselves or putting out you know, niceties to make you feel like perhaps you could trust them. Well, we have two different kinds of feminine on the earth right now. We have the feminine that is of the downfall world, the feminine energetics that is, you know, manipulative, catty, feeds on gossip, befriends you just so that they can find out more information about you and then turn around and use that information to make themselves feel more powerful by spreading rumors and by speaking poorly of you behind your back. Throughout the eons of downfall world, the feminine energetic ended up needing to protect herself somehow. And this has resulted in the feminine of the downfall world being very passive aggressive. Um, they are the ones who are very submissive, very withdrawn, very quiet. And then when they feel like they need to defend themselves or they feel cornered, then they fight out with words words that are intended to hurt and harm, words that are intended to protect them by causing others distress. You know, passive aggressive behavior. <laughs> so all of that is of the downfall world feminine. We also fortunately have the pure divine feminine with us as well. The pure divine feminine energetic is very nurturing, unconditionally loving, accepting of people exactly as they are, being there in a supportive way, having no need to be competitive, no need to justify their existence, no need to pass judgment. The divine feminine is very strong, 
and confident in who they are, so confident and compassionate that they know their own inner truth, their own inner divine wisdom, and their own inner divine strength so that they can just simply be. And in that way, they can then be very supportive to the outside world. We all have the opportunity to call in that kind of divine feminine within us. And as we're calling that divine feminine in, then we can release all that we might still carry of that downfall world feminine. Okay, so when you're feeling cornered, when you're feeling like someone did something to you that you want to get back at them, you want to prove yourself, you want to make yourself feel worthy, you know, you want them to respect you, that is a great opportunity for you to make a choice. All right? It's called a split point. We have split points in our life like almost constantly through our day where we are choosing how to react, how to respond, how to, um, you know, how to be. And our emotions play a big part of that, but a big part of how to switch from that downfall world feminine to the divine pure feminine is to simply observe yourself. Step back and go, oh, okay. This person said this, and I perceived it as though they were, you know, making me feel like I was inferior to them. It's interesting that I had that perception. It's interesting. Why do I feel like they are saying that? Why do I feel like they are trying to manipulate me in that way? And perhaps they are trying to manip manipulate you that way, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That's their perception. That's what they want. They want to control you through your emotional reaction. So it's just a simply a matter of stepping back and going, oh, okay, is that, that's your opinion? Is that how you feel? That's fine. I know my own truth. I know who I am at my core. And I have no reason to judge myself based on what you're saying or based on what you perceive, or based on what I perceive you perceiving. <laughs> so again, we have a daily opportunity to choose how we respond to others, how we respond to our external world. And in first quarter moon, we have the opportunity to look to the external world to those that are of the pure divine feminine and, and see them as examples. See them as examples. See how Mother Earth is so absolutely benevolently, unconditionally loving of us. And perhaps we can mirror some of that out to our environment and to the people who are in our lives. See how the divine feminine aspect of spirit, of source, you can call it God. See how the divine feminine creates such a beautiful environment, so peaceful, so absolutely full of love and light. And we can mirror that because we know that we carry that within us as well. And the more we focus on us being that, the more we become that. And then the less we have of those interactions that cause friction and those interactions that cause us to feel inferior or feel like we need to defend ourselves. I'm hearing that I should explain also that the divine feminine is very creative. 
very much like the curves, right? Very much like the curves, going with the flow, trusting the divine path to the point where it doesn't matter what is happening in the world. You just go, okay, what happens? I trust. And of course, you need to be steadfast and sturdy and strong and committed to yourself. That's a big part of it. We need to be very committed to ourself, very focused on what is right for ourselves. What does my heart desire? You ask, what does your heart desire? What does the heart desire? The, the heart is where our divine feminine speaks to us. And it gives us the messages, the tiny little whisper of, oh, I desire. Oh, I desire. Oh, I desire. And in that statement, that is where you find your own truth. That is how you seek your answers internal. Sit and ponder for a moment. Settle your, settle your thoughts. Let's move our attention point down into our heart space for a moment. Put your finger over your heart. There is a connection to our um, highest divine self. It is center of chest and then a little bit to the left. I actually have a little brown dot where mine is. There, place your finger and allow yourself to know. Allow yourself to know that you are right there. That is where you are. You are nowhere else. You are at the tip of your finger, inside your chest space, right there. That's where you are. And then from that space, you say, oh, how I desire. Oh, how I desire what? What's the first thing that comes into your mind? What's the first thing that you feel or hear or know or sense or smell? What's the first thing that you truly desire? It can be anything really. But this is the first step in learning how to connect to your heart space, learning how to know what your internal divine feminine desires truly are. What do you truly desire in your life? And once you know what you truly desire, there's no going back. I should have given you that warning ahead of time. <laughs> Focus on that desire and don't, don't let your logic center or your negative ego try to talk you out of it. Don't let it dismiss it. Don't let your negative ego tell you that, oh, that's stupid or that's too hard or we're never going to be able to accomplish that or, you know, all of those judgmental statements that happen. None of that matters. What matters is what your heart desires. What matters is what you're feeling right there under that finger. What matters is that connection that you just made to your highest, most optimal self, the connection that you just made in your heart center. That desire is what's the most important thing in your life now. And it doesn't matter if you have no idea how you're going to accomplish it. If you focus on it and you trust it and you allow yourself to feel it deeply and you allow yourself to revisit that desire, let's just say on a daily basis during this 
first quarter moon phase, it will become stronger. And as you focus on that desire and you say, yes, this is my desire, this is what I truly want to manifest in my life, you are going to be shocked at how quickly your world changes to allow that desire to manifest. All we really need to do is get out of the way. <laughs> we need to shut down the negative ego. We need to allow the logic center to take a little bit of a rest. And we just need to allow the universe to assist us in manifesting what we truly desire. And that is how we find our own internal truth. That is how we accomplish this moon cycle's intention of seeking the answers internal. When we focus on what our heart truly desires, it creates a, a new path for us. It creates the path towards accomplishing that desire. And as I said, you have no need to actually take logical steps towards it. You might know, okay, well, I have this wonderful desire and I feel an urgency. I feel an urgency to do this. I have an urgency to reach out to this person. I have an urgency to whatever it is. That's the first step. That's the first step on this new path of accomplishing what your heart truly desires. Okay? And when we create that new path, we have... Um, I'm hearing it's a staging area. It's an area where we have a shift happening, an area where we still have maybe the energetic connections to the old path that are holding us there, teasing us, judging us, wanting to push us away from what our heart desires. And so we just simply have to step back and, and observe that and allow all of those to fall away as we focus on that one true desire and on that first step of what we feel so urgently that we should be doing next, okay? Um, the ego, the ego is actually supposed to be our support system and it will as we advance, as we upshift, the ego will become more quiet and will become our ally. In the meantime, the ego tends to be more negative than positive. And so that's why I'm calling it negative ego versus ego. We want to begin seeing the difference. We want to begin kind of pulling apart what part of our ego is supportive, a very gentle masculine, and what part of the ego is the negative aspects that were caused by the downfall world. The ego had to do a lot of work for us. The ego had to protect us. The ego had to keep us safe. The ego had to defend us. And the ego is very much an analytical tool. It only knows how to receive information in from the external and then categorizes that and then regurgitates that. And so the negative ego is still very much trying to control us and protect us and defend us through those old mechanisms, the only mechanisms it knows how to do. So we as humans, as we begin to upshift, as we begin to awaken, as we begin on our ascension process, we have the opportunity to understand that we have the negative ego and we have the supportive positive ego. And we have the opportunity to begin focusing more on the positive ego, that quiet supportive arena in our mind, and then focusing on our 
internal focusing on our heart will then allow the negative ego to quiet and fade to the background. It's not going to give up easy, of course. But if we understand the difference between the two, then we can start saying to the negative ego, oh, negative ego, you have worked so hard. You are getting very, very tired. You're, you're getting sleepy. You are getting so, so sleepy. Negative ego, I give you permission to just take a rest, to go to sleep. You can sleep now. You can rest. I'm fine. I'm fine with you re resting. You can sleep now. And that gives you a lot more space in your internal landscape to be able to then connect to your positive ego, to connect to your heart space, to connect to your sacred vessel where all of your energy comes from. Okay? So negative ego, actually giving it permission to go to sleep is kind of a hypnosis. If you've studied hypnosis, if you know the hypnosis process, you just simply tell it it's okay to go to sleep. And that opens up a whole new area. It opens up the landscape to connect to our inner self and also then to connect to our higher aspects of ourselves that are within our energy field, but that we hardly ever connect to or never connect to because it's just so loud with negative ego clamoring on all the time. <laughs> so when we're able to quiet the negative ego, we are then able to hear more clearly what our heart truly desires, what our positive ego knows as our highest truth, and what our sacred vessel knows as the energy that provides us with our pure life source so that we have the energy to carry forth on that new path that we just created, the path of what our heart truly desires. Thank you for coming along with me today on this divinely guided journey of first quarter moon. May you have a fantastic week and I will see you at the full moon ceremony via the Zoom sessions. Looking forward to you participating live so that we can interact and that I can answer any questions and we can receive divine guidance and have a very intimate conversation. So, thank you. Love you. Blessings of peace-filled coalescence.